Hey loves, welcome back again to the channel. Today we'll be looking at facts about jamming never taught in school by Thomas Sowell. I'm so curious to be doing this one with you guys, but if you're new here on the channel, I am Stella. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please consider liking, subscribe to my channel, and let's get right into today's reaction. Germans are an old people. Their language is centuries older than English, French, Spanish, or Italian. But the history of... Wow. Their language is centuries older than English, Spanish, and Italian. That I didn't know. Wow. A dozen years has cast a long shadow over the thousands of years of their existence as a people. The rule of Hitler and the Nazis from 1933 to 1945 not only sealed the fate of the Germans of that generation, it has colored the way Germans have been seen since then, as well as the way the previous history of Germans has been seen. German intellectual figures, social traditions, and political movements in centuries past that were once seen in the context of their own times are now often seen as precursors of Nazi totalitarianism or of the Holocaust. Was all of German history leading up to Hitler? Or were the Nazi years simply a tragic aberration on a monumental scale? The collectivization of Germans in the minds of others has had major consequences in the real world, quite aside from its impact on intellectual conceptions of this people. At the end of the Second World War, millions of people of German ancestry living outside the Reich in various parts of Eastern Europe and the Balkans were sent back to Germany even though many of these families had been living where they were for centuries, and many of the individuals sent back to Germany had in fact never seen Germany. Winston Churchill protested these mass expulsions of millions of Germans on a scale grievous and undreamed of, and said, we must banish revenge against an entire race from our minds. In order to assess the 12 fateful years of the... I'm so sorry, um, this is leading to a very educational stand. Um, prior to this time, all the history I've been hearing about Germany has been the World War II and the Nazi reign. Aside that, I've never actually gotten the chance to listen to a German history before, like centuries before that time. The, the whole thing, uh, World War II, actually clouded people's mind to see German from that perspective, but not anymore. And, Nazi regime and its relationship to German culture and history in general, we must first review that history and that culture. Germans as a people have extended well beyond the boundaries of present-day Germany, not only in Europe, but in overseas settlements in the Western Hemisphere and as far away as Australia. The extent to which these far-flung settlements could be considered German, and for how long, depends of course on the extent to which German culture persisted among them, and whether or not that culture was linked to the German nation-state. To assess that, we need to see, at least in outline, some of the prominent features of the culture and values historically associated with Germans. Moreover, the features of German culture stand out in sharper relief against the cultures of the surrounding peoples, such as the Slavs of Eastern Europe or the British and French to the West. Long before German societies became industrialized, Germans were skilled craftsmen in many fields. Germans were known for brewing beer in Roman times, and Germany today produces more beer than any other country in Europe. People of German ancestry have set up breweries as far away as Australia and China the famous Tsingtao beer of China, having been created by Germans there. The leading American brands of beer, Budweiser, Coors, and Miller, were likewise all created by people of German ancestry. Wow. German breweries in Buenos Aires drove English beer out of the market there. In the Brazilian state of Sao Paulo, the only producers of beer in the early 20th century were Germans. Beer-brewing Germans are not simply a stereotype. German craftsmen also pioneered in making pianos and took this skill with them to other countries. The first pianos in colonial America were built by Germans, who also led the way in building pianos in Australia, Russia, France, and England. Wow. German craftsmanship also created optical products that made such firms as Zeiss, Schneider, Rodenstock, and Voigtlander world leaders in high-quality lens production. 
the leading lens-making firm in the United States, was founded by two German immigrants named Bausch and Lohm. Printing was another area in which Germans led the way. Gutenberg introduced printing with movable type in Europe, and centuries later, Germans set up the first printing press in the Western Hemisphere. Oh, wow. When printing presses began to spread from Western Europe into Eastern Europe, they spread first into German enclaves in the East, because here were concentrated people who could read. Germans also pioneered in map making. The name America was given to the Western Hemisphere by a German map maker. Mining was another area in which Germans became renowned as far back as the 16th century. Copper mines in Britain were opened up by Germans, as were silver mines in Mexico, Spain, and Norway, in addition to the German mining communities in the Balkans already noted. A German craftsmanship in metal created the first armor and swords manufactured in Mexico, as well as the renowned Kentucky Rifle, which was in fact made by Germans in Pennsylvania. For thousands of years, Germans excelled in military operations. German generals held positions of high command in the Roman legions, as they would in later centuries command armies in Tsarist Russia, in South America, and in the United States from the Revolutionary War of 1776 to the two world wars of the 20th century, in both of which the U.S. Army was commanded by generals of German ancestry, Pershing and Eisenhower, respectively. German commanders of American military forces in the Second World War also included Admiral Chester Nimitz, who commanded the Pacific Fleet, and General Karl Spatz, whose bombers reduced much of Germany to rubble. Wow. In both world wars, the armies of Germany inflicted far more casualties on opposing forces than the Germans sustained themselves. During the Middle Ages, the Teutonic Knights conquered Prussia, which became the heartland of German military prowess for centuries to come. German fighting men were in demand by rulers in Eastern Europe and in the Ottoman Empire and were used by the British in their attempt to suppress the rebellious American colonies, as well as by the Americans in order to bring their citizen army up to the military standards required to fight the British. Ironically, Germans produced not only leading military men, but also leading pacifist groups, such as the Mennonites, who also spread to other countries. Whether in agriculture, industry, commerce, or the military, Germans became known for thoroughness, organization, punctuality, and hard work, as well as for specific... Um, looking at the um, yeah, inventions, I've done a couple of reactions to anything Jama invented, but going like as far back as it is right now to see what Jama invented is... Wow, these people are actually very innovative and um, they have great minds and great hands. This is so impressive, very impressive. Big skills. Other countries not only welcomed German immigrants, but some actively recruited them and in some cases subsidized their travel. Not only in Eastern Europe, but also in developing nations in the Western Hemisphere and in Australia, Germans were recruited to pioneer in opening up undeveloped wilderness. Hmm. Wherever Germans settled around the world, there were newspapers printed in German. In Russia, the St. Petersburger Zeitung was founded in 1727, followed in later years by the Saratov Deutsch Zeitung in the German agricultural settlements on the Volga, and the Odessa Zeitung among Germans who settled by the Black Sea. In the United States during the immigrant era, most of the foreign language newspapers in the country were German. St. Louis had two daily newspapers in German as early as 1845, and out on the plains, there was an Odessa Zeitung set up by German immigrants from Russia who had kept their language and culture intact after settling in Russia for generations and then resettling in the United States. German language newspapers were published daily in 15 American cities, with such names as Die New Yorker Staatszeitung, the Cincinnati Volksblatt, the Chicago Abendpost, the Louisville Anzeiger, and the Deutsche Zeitung in New Orleans. In Brazil, there was the Santa Cruz Anzeiger, the Deutsche Zeitung, and the Brazil Post. Elsewhere in South America, there were the Argentinische Tagblatt and the Deutsche Zeitung for Paraguay, among others. In the Australian city of Adelaide, the Australische Zeitung was still being published in the late 20th century. 
These German language newspapers in countries around the world were just one indication of the persistence of German culture among people settled for generations, or even centuries, in other countries. German settlers in Australia built houses and communities in the style that they had been used to in their homeland. A German traveler in 19th century Australia wrote of an immigrant settlement there. There are German public houses, a German drugstore, German doctors, stores, blacksmith, carpenter, school, church. In fact, everything is German. The traveler would believe himself in some little village of the old country between the Rhine and the Oder. A rural village in Argentina was described this way by a visitor in 1967. I entered the church and heard something I did not remotely expect in this distant place. Traditional German hymns of Holy Week, sung in typical Volga German style in which each voice remains distinct. I looked around. Men, women, and children were in their Sunday dress. Some of the women wore scarves. Beneath them were faces like those of the country people in Germany. In front of the nave, the minister was preaching in common German to the parishioners. It was difficult to believe that I was in Latin America, that wow. the ancestors of these people had left Germany for Russia 200 years ago. This cultural persistence among Germans around the world represented a loyalty to the particular subculture of the locality from which they had come, not a political loyalty to the German nation. Many had, in fact, immigrated before there was a German nation created in 1871. A 19th-century German community in Australia was described as the recreation of a Silesian village. In the United States as well, Germans from particular localities settled together and maintained the culture of that area. Frankfurt, Kentucky was founded by Germans from Frankfurt, Germany, and Grand Island, Nebraska by Schleswig Holsteiners. Lomira, Wisconsin, was settled almost exclusively by Prussians from Brandenburg, while the nearby towns of Hermann and Theresa were settled by Pomeranians. Even among Germans who immigrated from Russia to the United States, those who came from the Volga settlements established their own communities in the Plain States, distinct from the communities in those states established by those Germans who came from the Black Sea settlements. Even when they resettled again in California, the Volga Germans and the Black Sea Germans settled separately, the former around Lodi and the latter around Fresno. How long and to what extent the Germans remained culturally separate varied with circumstances. Rural enclaves tended to remain culturally insular longer and more completely than was the case when Germans settled in urban communities that included people of other nationalities and cultures. Where the Germans were the numerically predominant urban group, as they were for centuries in much of Eastern Europe, they could assimilate the local population, or at least its upwardly mobile elements, to the German culture. But where the Germans were greatly outnumbered, and especially where the great majority of the German immigrants were male, then interactions among groups, including intermarriage, eroded the German culture. This was the case in much of 19th century Australia, but not in South Australia, where whole families of Germans tended to settle together, and there were as many women as men, so that these communities could maintain their separate social and cultural identities for generations. It was much the same story in Brazil, where there was very little intermarriage with members of the local population living near German agricultural communities well into the 20th century, while in cities and in some rural areas where there were more diverse populations, acculturation and assimilation became more common. Yet even living in cities with large numbers of people from other backgrounds did not automatically lead to rapid assimilation. In New York City, where 90% of the population was non-German, in the early 20th century, most people of German ancestry nevertheless married other people of German ancestry. That changed over the years, but not immediately or rapidly. This cultural cohesiveness was seldom accompanied by political cohesiveness or group identity politics. Germans were usually not very politically active in any case, and they tended to be underrepresented among career politicians. Where German political leaders arose in other countries, it was seldom as representatives of ethnic Germans in those countries. In the United States, for example, those people of German ancestry who did achieve prominence in politics, the Muhlenbergs in the 18th century, Karl Schurz and John Peter Altgeld in the 19th, and Herbert Hoover and Dwight D. Eisenhower in the 20th century, did so as representatives of the American people at large, 
rather than as spokesmen for ethnic German interests. There were similar patterns in other countries. In Australia, Germans tended to be underrepresented in politics, and those Germans who achieved political office were elected from constituencies where there were few Germans, as well as from constituencies where Germans were the predominant population. In Russia, the presence of Baltic Germans in high positions in the Tsarist government was of no benefit to the Volga Germans or the Black Sea Germans, in whom these German officials took no interest and whom they looked down on as peasants. In Brazil, Germans long remained politically apathetic until after the Second World War, when they began to elect more deputies. However, in places where the German minority was under sustained political attack, such as by the Latvians or the Czechs, Germans were provoked into political activity. The persistence of German culture did not, in most cases, mean making public dramatizations of a separate identity, exceptions again being in places like Czechoslovakia. More commonly, Germans maintained their culture without making a public issue of it. In the United States, such American sports icons as Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig grew up speaking German, and so did Nobel Prize-winning economist George Stigler. I, I, Germans are actually travelers. They travel and then settle and try to, you know, dominate. I think what actually stopped the rise spread of Germans to other country, in my own opinion, I would say because of the stereotype from World War II and the Nazi regime, I think that stuff actually broke um, Germans and um, traveling and settling and then. Um, being in other countries because according to the video the beginning part majority of them were actually deported back from um back to germany even the ones that have traveled centuries and um years before the world war ii they were actually brought back to germany wow and seeing the innovation from germany they've actually been um of great support to the world like great support system from the mining there are different kinds of crafts that's actually a lot like it's a lot from them they are actually they are actually very proactive zealous creative innovative and um entirely very intelligent because even as far back as those era they were actually being innovative helping the world with um things and all of those things it's just so amazing Actually, Germans are amusing, to be very honest. Uh, let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Some of the facts here you think are incorrect. Um, you can help me with that in the comment section. And yeah, I love the preserve heritage. Like, they keep singing um, the German language, keep taking the languages across different continents. It's actually a good thing. And the lady that, um, the man or the lady that told her story that when she walked into the, show, uh, the church, it was typical um, German song, um, German everything, language. That is actually very impressive to see preserved everything like that and couple of the fact that the um the ancestors have been there like 200 years ago that says a lot about their mindset and i love you so much um let me know what you think about this video in the comment section i love you stay safe stay healthy bye